to this day, such as yourself. Yeah, for sure. And all those kids who went on that trip to this day, they'll t they'll talk about that their time with him as being transformative in their own lives. Yeah. Well, he was yeah, and he was also, you know, he showed all of us that what was possible to to do something with your life and to. You know, to be momentous in your life, you didn't have to be a sheep and do what other people did, and you know, be counted and all all those things. We had no examples of that in Hamilton. We never, there were no, you know, except for your pop and some other people. There weren't many great entrepreneurs. I mean, there were not people, and also, I mean, your dad did it silently, as I told you before in these stories. That he was very generous, very quietly. Even though he was an abrasive guy, he was very generous. But and he didn't never no one he didn't want anybody to know about his generosity, like I know I told you that personal story about your father and my mother and myself, but um, but Gene was like uh, he was out there he was just out there he was just like unabashed um, going to change the world and and like I said uh, be momentous, and I never knew momentous people in my life. First guy. First inspiration because my dad had died when I was 13, so it was the first male exemplar that I had that really uh, showed me what was possible. It was hugely influential in my life, hugely. In fact, I wrote a, a book that was actually quite a well accepted book uh, on um, on behavior and science um, uh, using uh, Kabbalistic principles, and uh, I dedicated the book to him. He was that influential to me. Did you ever hear any stories about how the older "quote unquote" generation was felt about him? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he really found it difficult being political. He, you know, it, and it's a fact. It's a fact within the ortho, the uh, conservative Jewish movement that when you have a synagogue, you have to play. Got to play. You got to play the money card. Because at the end of the day, it's a, you have to you have to be realistic. You got to pay the mortgage of the thing. You got to pay the rabbi's salary. It's it's a business also, and um, he just didn't like it. He I mean he did it. He knew he had to do it, but it was it rubbed him. He talked to me privately about it. it just rubbed him. He, but he knew he had to do it, and it's just a, it's just a fact. If you want to be a synagogue in that movement, you want to survive. Um, that's what you had to do. Yeah, for sure. And he uh, yeah. Uh, and everyone has their own style because, as I said, with Rabbi Simon being very um, abrasive and very uh, dictatorial, he's also an extraordinary guy because he would go and did missionary work. I know we call it missionary work, but uh, but he would go to the hospitals and he would visit all the Jewish people who were sick, whether they belonged to his congregation or not. It was it was. And it's not called missionary. It's called. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, um, and it was extraordinary. He, like, I mean, so you know. You have so you have memories of Rabbi Simon doing that. Oh yeah, no, I don't or think Jean. I don't think Gene ever did it. Quite frankly. Okay, so you're talking about Rabbi Simon. No, I said, no, I'm saying to you that's how you don't know. You know, you never. You know, one of the rules of life is you can't judge a book by its cover. You just can't. It's a it's a huge mistake to be able to do that. Because we make these judgments that are often, often wrong. So even though Simon was this dictatorial, uh, dictatorial, abrasive kind, of, this is my way, the highway kind of guy, he had this other part of him which was a really compassionate and committed to it. I mean, he it was part of his gig. He went to the hospitals and he comforted the sick. He did. Who told you that? I I know, I know from my my parents. I know that when my my father was sick, and from people there, he would be there. He'd be there. Do you have any memories of the Hunter Street show? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, it, was the, it was the first Beth Jacob. I remember where it was. I remember being a young, I must have been three or four years old, running up the aisle and stuff. But yeah, for sure. It was like, a, like an old time, uh, what I remember it was an old time Orthodox synagogue with a, the, with a bima in the, in the middle and the men and women on the side. I, I don't even know if it was conservative. It might have been. It was orthodox. It must have been orthodox, yeah. yeah. Do you remember when they moved to Aberdeen? Uh, no. I was just a kid. I, I, no, I don't know. So remember. your memories of Rabbi Simon are because your father was ill and you remember Rabbi Simon visiting him or you heard of Rabbi Simon? Well, no. Him. Like, you know, my dad died. I had to say, I, I said Kaddish every morning and I got, you know, to, and I knew I got to know uh, Cantor Zimmerman and all, uh, all, those, all those people. You know, I, I, though I have some uh, extraordinary memories of, from Hamilton, but they're not really in, until until Gene came into place. It, well, they weren't warm memories for me, quite frankly, 
because of my dad's passing away and that kind of stuff. But I remember there was a, an extraordinary guy uh, called Mr. Sharfitz. And Mr. Sharfitz worked for, it was an old, older guy. I don't think he had teeth. And he would come and he'd collect for the UJA with the pushka, box, uh, the pushka boxes. And they'd be sitting on our, I remember in our house, and the, he, my mom would help him count the pennies and do the nickel and stuff like that. He was, he was one of the most extraordinary guys. Like how people influence you of just who you meet and just by the nature of their, of their gentility and their, their sense of balance. Uh, and that's the other thing about Jean that I, that, and both Anita and Jean, that was extraordinary for people who knew them, is that they were very balanced people between self-interest and non-self-interest. In most cases, as you know, you don't find that in, in most people. Most people are either one way or the other. They're, either, uh, they're out of balance. Either they're too self-interested, they're just you know, energy vampires and they only care about themselves and you know exactly what you're getting into, or they're the other way, which are they're, they're totally selfless and, all, but, and both of them are, are kind of suspicious because you know, I think balance is important in, in life. But they were. They were extraordinary balanced. Uh, Anita to this day, like she's in, she's in the, they're extraordinary people. Like, I mean, she's written, you know, 13, 14 books. And I mean, these are, these are, these are really extraordinary, like life changing people, like committed to life, to helping society, to, anyways, that's why the, that's why the three years was so, was so important and in 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 impression, uh, impressive and uh, to us impressionable kids. Because we just never saw that before. This was, this was, this was the big show. This was the big league, in the sense of bigger thinking, world vision thinking, you know, commitment. Can you say something then about Anita in those years? What do you remember about Anita? I mean, um, the impression she made on you. I loved her from the first time I saw her. She was amazing, and she was amazing because. Um, she never, she was so confident in who she was as a human being. And I had not seen that before either. Most of the people I'd met before then were either, if they were with people who were castle or shadow or whatever, you know, they'd become insecure or, or they'd feel shrunk or whatever. She it didn't, she was so secure in who she was that she totally supported Jean. She, they never, and I was, I was with them intimately, privately, but after all the kids had left, I was there, I mean, they, I was there a lot. They had this, this really great um, marriage of, of, at that point, of, uh, of equals, of um, respect, mutual respect for each other. And she, they were really um, soldiers together. They were, they're not, not one person was a head, head. It was really quite, it was, a, again, because I was a young kid, I didn't know, but I'd never seen that before, that kind of, you know, that kind of mutual support, mutual respect for people, because I came from a patriotic, you know, so did you. Like, you know, the, the dad was the, the guy and the boss, and that's how it worked. And this was not like this. This was, a, it was almost like a, a new paradigm. I hate, hate using the word paradigm. But it was a new way of seeing the world that, I, that none of us kids has ever seen before. For me, it was impactful because, you know, I was, you know, must have been desperate for need of a father figure. But, um, but what, a, what a father figure to be able to have. Okay, I, I think that's it. Okay.